Hello everyone, Juxtaposition here. Today's video will be entitled The Banking Crisis Psychological Hoax Video. Thank you. Alright, it's going to be a short one. I just want to make some points that are absent from the social media and CIA controlled, clandestine service controlled mainstream media, cable television. Alright, you do know that your news is fake, right? And you do know that our banking system is fake, right? So it's sort of a uh, oxymoron to ask a question about whether our money system or our banking system is solvent and is strong. I mean, of course it isn't. It never was, okay? Before you were born, our money system was corrupt it was dishonest, it was insolvent, it was based on poppycock principles, like uh, if you went to School of Economics, you learned about fractional banking. I got news for you, if you believe in fractional banking, I got a bridge I'd like to sell you, and I'll sell it to you for $50 a month. And you can buy a Golden Gate Bridge that was constructed during the Great Depression. Yeah, remember when our banks collapsed and we had the Great Depression, which is code for period of negative growth in the economy? Let me translate. Lots of people couldn't find work and were unemployed. And allegedly, some bankers jumped out of windows when you used to be able to open the windows. In Manhattan, New York, we had people, you know, doing swan dives onto the sidewalk, sort of like Frank Olson didn't do from the Statler Hotel 11th floor. He, he was thrown out, just like Diane Linkletter. She was thrown from the sixth floor of her Shoreham Tower apartment in West Hollywood. She didn't jump. She was tossed. You can ask Ed Durston about that. Anyway, what I wanted to tell you is our banking system has never been solvent. It has never been accurate. It's never been audited. It's never been audited in the history of banking. There's never been an independent audit. There never will be because, you see, <laughs> it would flunk the audit. If you had a legitimate audit, and it would, be, it, would be, it would fail, right? There's insufficient collateral in the system to support all the fake credit loans that have been made or the fake credit notes, the bank notes, which is your so-called currency. There is insufficient amount of gold, silver, real estate, durable goods, inventory, um, there is insufficient real estate in the system to support the trillions, the hundreds of trillions of dollars of fake fiat notes that have been invented and created. All right. My point is this. Uh, the, the Internet is over flooded with uh, discussions about how the Silicon Valley Bank and the FTX cryptocurrency, which preceded it, is the beginning of the end and oh my god we're going to go on to the central bank digital currency social obedience platform well i mean that can happen at any time you don't need a silicon bank failure or sharon stone who's a professional actress who says she lost half of her money in silicon valley bank okay well i don't believe anything sharon stone says i don't believe anything that oliver stone says okay i don't believe anyone who has a screen actors guild card is going to be truthful okay and let me just go down the list of Jewish people who have lied to us over the years. It's a long list. That's dominantly who appears on television, okay? Let's take the, lo the latest Jewish liar is a guy named Lawrence Summers. Larry Summers. He went to MIT. You know, that's where Noam Chomsky, another Jewish man who's in charge of applied linguistics, at MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. That's where Sam Bankman Fried graduated. Sam Bankman Freed, who's no longer free. And also Larry Summers got a master's degree and a PhD from Harvard University, whereupon later he became the president of Harvard University until they sacked him for sexual misconduct and he had to leave. Lawrence Henry Summers, okay? <laughs> Lawrence, Lawrence Henry Summers is Jewish, okay? And you shouldn't believe anything he says. He was born in New Haven, Connecticut to a Jewish family. And he, 
Oh, my God. Anyway, so my point is, he's a blithering uh, buffoon. He's a cackling cacophony of chaos. Just delete him. I don't think Lawrence Summers knows anything about banking and less about economics. And he's very Jewish. So uh, if Harvard University won't have him be their president, you know he's got a problem because Harvard graduates felonious criminals, you know, like Jeffrey Skilling. He went to Harvard. Okay, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he went to Harvard. Okay, who else we got going here that wants to lie to you about our current banking crisis? Alan Greenspan, remember him, the fake president of the Federal Reserve Bank, which doesn't really exist in real life. It only exists like the Manson family. It exists on television. Anyway, Alan Green, Greenspan <laughs> was born in the Washington Heights area of New York City, and he's a Romanian Jewish man, all right? And I never believed anything that Alan Greenspan ever said, anything that ever came out of his pie hole. Don't forget he's married to a media mogul, Andrea Mitchell. I wouldn't believe anything she says either. Anyway, Alan Greenspan went to New York University, NYU, where he got a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. And then he went to Columbia University for a PhD. Columbia University. That's a CIA spook school. And that's where you get your fake Federal Reserve presidents. Remember irrational exuberance? Alan Greenspan, another Jewish economist to be ignored. He never got a single thing right. He's not in charge of anything, okay? He's the spokesperson. He's the person to apply linguistics to lie to you and to for fear porn. Who else we got? Oh, yeah. Here's a guy whose book I actually bought. That's how foolish I, I was when I was younger. Milton Friedman. Yeah, Milty, Uncle Milty. <coughs> kind of like Milton Berle. Remember him? He's another Jewish man. I personally met Milton, Ber Milton Berle. I met at the uh, Century City Friars Club, which he was a part owner of. I didn't know he was a part owner, but he hung out there a lot. Anyway, Milton Friedman, <laughs> what schools did he go to, you might ask? Well, okay, he's got a lot of awards, all right? Because he's a fake economist. And I think that... Uh, I know more about economics in my pinky finger than Milton Friedman knew in his entire family, okay? He went to Rutgers University for his bachelor's degree, went to University of Chicago for his master's, and of course he went to CIA Columbia University for his PhD. That makes him a CIA clandestine, applied linguistics, blithering idiot. Okay, now he's passed away. He died in 2006 at age 94 in San Francisco, CIA San Francisco. But he came out of Brooklyn, New York, all right? And his parents, yes, his parents were from Hungary and Ukraine, and they're Jewish. So we got another Brooklyn Jewish person coming out of uh, New York, kind of like Louis Jolion West, a CIA medical doctor psychiatrist, came out of Brooklyn, New York. Another Jewish person I would never trust, Louis Jolan West, Milton Friedman. Okay? So anyway, those are three Jewish people who are prominent on television. None of them tell the truth. Uh, here's a fourth, in case you weren't paying attention. Jim Cramer, Jim Joseph Cramer from outside of uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Technically, he's from uh, Win Windor, Pennsylvania, which is next door to Philadelphia. Anyway, he's a Jewish boy who went to uh, Harvard University for his uh, bachelor's degree, and he got a law degree, a JD, from Harvard. He has no economic training whatsoever, and he has his own show on CNBC entitled Mad Money, because he's a bald head mad hatter. That's right. Joseph, James Joseph Kramer, Jim Kramer, he pumped FTX and Samuel Bankman Freed. He pumped that, he pumped and pimped them. And he was wrong, wasn't he? Yes, he was. And now he's telling you about the banking crisis and he wants you to buy stock in Silicon Valley uh, Bank after it's tanked, because it looks like a good buy now. He's another Jewish person on television you should ignore, okay? And he went to Harvard. And you should ignore people who go to Harvard or MIT 
or Columbia University or Stanford or University of California or the Haas Business Schools. Peter Schiff, there's a fifth Jewish person who's going to lie to you. Peter Schiff, he went to the Haas Business School at UC Berkeley and he has been consistently wrong about, you know, <laughs> about anything to do with our money system. He wants you to buy gold. I don't disagree with Peter Schiff on buying gold. I am a gold bug. He says to stay away from cryptocurrency. I agree with Peter Schiff. Cryptocurrency is a CI clandestine, you know, power trip. But so is all the money systems are. All the money systems are controlled by the CIA. All of them. They're all controlled by the bankers. The bankers run the CIA. That's my point. Now, let me give you some real life economic examples. When we had the greatest collapse of our banking system in the history of the American component, because our banking system is international. It's not an American system. It's an international system. But we had, in 1929, the Great Depression, where tens of thousands of people were thrown out of employment, lost their jobs. So what did we do? We went ahead and we built the Tennessee Valley Project, a series of dams in the Appalachian Mountains from 1933 all the way up to 1944, and we put a lot of people to work, and we built a series of water control systems known as the TVA, Tennessee Valley Authority, TVA. And that was all done when all of our banks were insolvent and we had no economic growth. We had the TVA project. And during that 10 years, guess what else we built? You know, given our banking system was in dire straits, we had the Boulder Dam later renamed the Hoover Dam. The Boulder Dam was agreed to be begun in, on December 21st, 1928, but it really didn't get going until 1939 and 1929 when we had the Great Depression. And they continued to build that stupid dam um, all the way up to 1945. So all during World War II, when our banking system was in collapse, we were building the Hoover Dam, okay? The Boulder Dam. And we were able to go to war with Japan and we were able to go to war with Germany and we built the Golden Gate Bridge, which was completed around 1935. We built the Golden Gate Bridge, we built the Boulder Dam, we built dams in the Tennessee Valley Authority Appalachian Mountains area. We went to war with the Japanese, we went to war with the Germans all when our banking system was insolvent and had collapsed. How is that possible? The government couldn't bail out the banks because the government is insolvent itself. And the reason is because it's the Wizard of Oz. It's the Wizard of Oz. We got flying monkeys and we got Sacred Heart convent nuns with the witch, witch hats on. And it's all a magic act. So if you think that your money is a, unsafe in a bank, pull it out. Of course, they're not going to give it to you, but you should you know, consider pulling it out. But the point is that um, our banking system has never been safe. Never! And we've had all these wars, and we've had 13 years in Afghanistan, and, and 10 years in Vietnam, and we had the Korean War, and we had all this drug trafficking going on, and we completely controlled Cuba during, you know, since the USS Maine in 1898, and our banking system has been insolvent, it's clapped the whole time. So Larry Summers doesn't know jack about banking, finance, Harvard University doesn't teach them anything. They are memorizing, repeat, indoctrinated to read a script. And I just want my video out there because I'm sick and tired of having Jewish people tell us what to believe about our banking system. Hey, it's a fraudulent scheme. Did you believe the Wizard of Oz? Judy Garland told us. The little dog, Toto, pulled the curtain back. It's a little old man on a stepladder pulling the levers. That's the banking system. So if you like little old man pulling the ladders, buy a cryptocurrency, you know, worship a bank, take a banker to dinner, okay? It means your mind is broken. You don't get it. Our system is pacification and control under maritime law. That's it. So if you want to create your own system, you use barter and exchange, you use silver coins, you use gold coins, you use art, you trade your labor. Those are all things the banks can never get their fingernails on. They cannot control your labor. They cannot control barter and exchange. They cannot control physical delivery of valuable, tangible property. 
They cannot control that. That's why they should never let them take your weapons away from you. Never. Never. And you'll have as much freedom as you're willing to fight for. So if you're not willing to fight, you will have no freedom. It's very simple, people. So if why were people unconcerned about our banking system a few months ago or a few years ago, right? These, these are simulations. Every one of these bank failures is a simulated failure. So if they want to tell you the system is collapsing, they're free to do so. But you're also free to ignore them because bankers don't tell the truth. And most bankers went to a fancy school that indoctrinated them to read a script. So you should never trust a banker, ever. His name doesn't have to be Jim Cramer or Larry Summers or Alan Greenspan or Milton Friedman or Peter Schiff. Just in general, don't trust a banker. Erin Valente did, and look what happened to her. She got murdered, all right? Look at Roberto Calfi. What happened to him? He was an elite banker. He got hung from an or by an orange rope with a love knot from the Blackfriars Bridge in the center of London, facing the bankers. What happened to Michele Sedona, you ask? He's given a cyanide-laced cup of cappuccino. Goodbye, Michele Sedona. Right? Right. Doesn't end well for bankers. Don't trust a banker. Take care. Bye-bye.